One day, while I was spending some time on Discord, one of you sent me a message challenging me to recreate a specific thumbnail in Photoshop and make a video about it. The thumbnail belongs to a well-known YouTuber in the Arab world, and since many of you follow me from that region, I thought it would be a great idea. In today's episode, I'm going to try and recreate the thumbnail myself. I'll search for the assets, put everything together, and then we'll compare my version with the original to see which one looks better. Also, I have a big gift for you at the end of the video, so make sure to watch until the end to find out what it is. Now, without any further delay, let's get, let's started. get started. The first step was uploading the original thumbnail into a Photoshop canvas so I could take a closer look at it and understand how the composition actually works. After that, I dragged and dropped this image into the canvas. Honestly, I couldn't find the exact same image used in the original, so I uploaded the thumbnail to ChatGPT and asked it to extract the person from it. That way, I could use the cutout to help recreate the thumbnail more accurately. Once I had the subject, I added it to the main canvas and resized it to match the original as closely as possible. Then, using both the Content Aware Fill and Liquify tools, I was able to restore the parts that were originally cut off on the left side and move them to the right. To finish up this part, I applied a quick camera raw filter to make the face stand out more, since the image extracted by ChatGPT wasn't very clear and looked a bit dark. Next, I moved on to editing the face. I've actually made a separate video where I explain that process in detail, so I highly recommend checking it out. If you'd like me to make a new version with updated tips, just let me know in the comments. I'll go ahead and finish the face edit, then continue from there. Also, if you're enjoying this type of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming soon, so stay tuned. Once the face edit was done, I added a stadium background on the right side of the canvas. Then I changed its color to a dark red, just like in the original thumbnail. Red is really eye-catching and works well for this kind of design. Next, I added a glow behind the character to help him stand out from the background. I used a simple red brush and changed the blending mode to linear add to give it a more realistic lighting effect. After that, I applied an inner glow to the subject to make the lighting effect stronger and more convincing. Next, using a regular brush, I started painting some red glow on the right side of his face to add more emotion and intensity to the thumbnail. I painted over the whole area first, then used the eraser tool to remove the parts I didn't need. After that, I changed the blending mode to soft light and slightly reduced the opacity to make it blend in better. At this point, I noticed that the hand was missing some glow, so I applied a bit of inner glow to it, just like I did earlier, to make it feel more consistent with the rest of the lighting. Then, to make the thumbnail feel more dynamic, I added a nice looking particle overlay I found online. It looked pretty good, so I dropped it into the canvas, changed the blending mode to screen, and painted over the areas where I wanted the particles to stand out more clearly. Next, I tackled the blue boxes. To be honest, I just placed the original thumbnail beside mine and started copying the boxes exactly as they were. Nothing too complicated, just trying to match their size and position as closely as possible. Finally, I'll begin searching for the club logos to add inside the boxes I just created. But before that, let's add the score in this area. Now let's get back to downloading the club logos. Once I have them, I'll place each one in the right spot, just like this, making sure the positioning matches the original thumbnail. To add a bit more depth to the design, I'll apply a drop shadow behind the main character so the team scores appear slightly underneath him, giving it a more layered and dynamic look. Next, let's move on to the left side of the thumbnail. I'll search for a high quality image by googling Barca Interfowl and try to find something similar to the original scene. Once I find a good image, I'll resize it and place it in a clear spot on the canvas while also leaving enough space at the bottom for the text like this. Finally, I might apply a quick camera raw filter to make the image stand out more, especially by enhancing the greens and blues to give it a cleaner, more vibrant look. After that, I highlighted a specific area of the image using a circular shape, then added the same red stroke around it along with a drop shadow, just like in the original thumbnail. I think this part looks really good. Now I just need to fill in the empty space here to balance the composition. 
Next, I open Google Translate to type the same Arabic word from the original thumbnail since I don't have an Arabic keyboard on my laptop. Once the text was ready, I resized and styled it a bit, just like this. This is honestly the best font I could find that resembles the original. If you happen to know the exact font used in the original thumbnail, feel free to share it in the comments below. Then I started refining the text by adding a red stroke, turning the second word yellow and adjusting the styling to help it stand out, just like in the original design. I also added a soft shadow to the left side of the subject to help separate him from the background a bit more. Back to the text, I made it bolder and more readable, then experimented with a light 3D effect. This wasn't part of the original thumbnail, but I think it adds a nice touch and makes the design feel more polished. Finally, I applied a camera raw filter across the whole design to tie everything together. I boosted the contrast, added a bit more exposure, and increased the vibrance so the thumbnail would really pop on the YouTube homepage. And just like that, we're done. Here's the final result. Let me know what you think in the comments. I put a lot of effort into this and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It really means a lot to me and helps me keep making content like this. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I read every single one of them. As for the gift I mentioned earlier, you can download the PSD file from the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.